It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back, you're live with Expresso and in a show that has been popping, blazing with the work that firefighters do. We've explored the amazing work that they do to combat rampant and destructive wildfires, which happen a lot, certainly in our neck of the woods. But let's look at the flip side of that coin. Did you know that fault fires also serve a vital purpose in the germination of various species of fainbos? Well, today we have the great privilege of chatting to conservationist and ecological photographer, Dr. Andrew Backstad. He's one of the best in the business. His recent exhibition of floral fireworks has garnered him now international acclaim and with good reason. So Baxter holds a PhD in paleocology and has special interests in landscape ecology, biodiversity, conservation, and climate change. And he just recently featured his work on the Insider SA and is now here with us to share his passion for capturing, let's call it the great outdoors. Doctor, very good morning. How are you? Good morning to you. Good morning to all your viewers this morning. Uh, so good to be connecting with you and I think to be having a vital conversation, probably a conversation that is more focused on and highlighted now than ever before, thankfully. But it requires advocates like yourself putting this kind of material out there to get the world thinking. So recently you featured on the Insider SA this week, speaking in detail about the expansive natural landscapes that you've photographed, that you bring to life. Now, since our viewers can catch you again on the repeat at 1 p.m. this coming Saturday, uh, give us a little sneak peek. What can they expect to see in this episode? How did you find the experience? Yeah, that was wonderful. I, th I think the viewers can expect to see a, a chronicle, a journey of my my view of the natural world through the lens of my camera, uh, and it and it really details that journey from a macro point of view, uh, from a, a broad landscape point of view, uh, right down to the minutia of of macro photography, and uh, it's been a wonderful journey for me and a great privilege to be on the show. It's almost like quantum <laughs> photography here. You seem to find another dimension in the way that you capture the images that you do. Your passion for nature and macro photography, as you call it, have amalgamated into a visually arresting series of local boss titled Floristic Fireworks. I love the title. So what were you trying to achieve with this series? Yeah, Graham, it was a really interesting episode. I mean, I, I used to walk down the mountain quite late in the evening and, and, and take photographs as I was going down of the proteus, particularly the Lucas Bermans, the, the pin cushions, um, in, in low light and just a couple of cell phone pictures. And I got back home and looked at them and I thought, my gosh, they look like real fireworks, but they're not, they're natural. And, and so that took me on a journey of exploration um, to try and capture these beautiful, beautiful natural flowers, these inflorescences of the famous. Uh, on Table Mountain, in the, in the mountains, and uh, in Kirsten Wash Gardens particularly, um, to, to try and generate this, this, this series of, of natural fireworks. And uh, yeah, it certainly has captured the imagination of, of many people. It's been amazing. Well, my jaw is sitting on the ground, just looking at the images that we've seen already. Absolutely captivating. Now, if we look at the deeper layers to the work and your, your calling, if I can put it like that, you're also the CEO and Executive Director of WESA, which promotes participation in caring for the Earth. So what are some of your biggest concerns right now regarding the degradation of our planet due to climate change? What keeps you up at night? Yeah, Graham, I mean, it's a really good question. And, and I always try and say, uh, when, when I'm having this discussion, I, I, I use a different terminology and I say the climate emergency rather than climate mm. change, because it, it really is an emergency. And there, and there are many things that are happening here. The unprecedented rate of climate change is going to leave uh, many of the natural ecosystems that we love and adore uh, in a serious part of state. Uh, we're going to see a decline in, in, in natural habitat. We're going to see a loss of biodiversity. And that's going to have an impact on human well-being. I mean, I think this is the key thing, is that we need and depend on natural systems for our livelihoods and our well-being. If we just think about fresh water, I mean, we know about that crisis in Cape Town. We'll understand how these shifting climatic patterns are going to have huge impacts on, on fresh water, on the production of food. So it introduces things like food insecurity. Uh, it'll contribute to disease, displacement of people, ultimately famine and, and potentially war. And so these are, you know, these sound like huge, scary things, but, but there are things that we can be doing right now to, to try and mitigate these, these challenges. And, um, you know, we, we all need to galvanize a civil society to do our bit. 
I, I love that. It's, it's, it's no longer a nice to have or a thought that we should be focusing on. Like you say, it's an emergency that needs to be addressed with action right now. So that being said, as South Africans, we really are so lucky to have access to the kind of natural beauty and the ecological diversity that you are highlighting in your series. How can we, in our own ways then, contribute towards the sustainability yeah, very great question. And, and many people think it's such a big issue that they, they can't do anything about it or it's too big for them, but that's not true. I think what we see, certainly uh, in, in our work at WESA, is that there's so many people who are prepared to get up, roll their sleeves up and do something, even if it's a beach cleanup on a Saturday morning or a restoration of a wetland. Or, I mean, we see it in Cape Town with, with people doing little micro projects along the Lisbeck River to reestablish the ecology. These are really, really helpful things. So everyone has an opportunity to, to do something small. But also we can galvanize a civil society to lobby government to change laws and to, uh, and to, and to redact or retract some of the, 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 the decisions they've made which have been acting against the natural environment. We see, for example, how civil society stood up against the Shell seismic surveys off mm. the wild coast and have won a court victory. And so, you know, our voices can be heard. We can make a difference. We've got to be more conscious about how we consume, how we move around um, and, uh, and just be far more aware of our natural environment. Yep, and we have got something that needs to be protected here in the form of our fame boss that you are bringing to life in a way that I've never seen before that is capturing the imagination of the world. So thank you so much, Dr. Baxter, for your contributions to art and our environment, awe-inspiring. And for more on life, work and adventures of this incredible Dr. Andrew Baxter, make sure that you tune in on uh, this uh, coming Saturday at 1 p.m. right here on S3 for a repeat of the Insider Essay. And I want you to stick around. The good doctor's not going anywhere we're going to be getting into some of his amazing work and he's going to break it down for us in just a moment it's my feel -good show. welcome back you're still live with expresso in a moment we'll continue to celebrate with the cape town carnival some amazing performances coming your way but for now we are back with fame boss photographer connoisseur if you will dr andrew baxter whose recent exhibition of floral fireworks has garnered him international acclaim and understandably so so the fireworks in this case that he captured are all proteas endemic to the unique feinbos vegetation of our amazing cape floral kingdom and now we have the honor of viewing a handful of these images with andrew explaining a little bit more about what it took to take them and this incredible subject matter um andrew thank you so much for sticking around um, so I'm, it's over to you sir let's take a look at some of the pictures that inspire you and what inspired them and if you can break them down for us just a little bit um, we'd love to and I know we've got a lot of photographer enthusiasts on this show that would love to get inside your mind if we can so take it away sir yeah thanks Graham um, yeah so most of the pictures that, I, that I've taken of these of these proteas these particularly the pin cushions, uh, I've taken in, in low light conditions. So um, the, the background is, is naturally quite dark. In fact, I select dark backgrounds deliberately to pop the flowers. So a lot of these pictures are taken at twilight, so end of day, uh, sometimes even into the early evening. Um, and, and I add a little bit of supplemental light. So I'm not using a flash in the conventional sense because that would just absolutely dominate the flower and bring the background in but I, I'll often use a torch to light paint just the flowers, keeping the background really dark wow. and just illuminating the flowers. Absolutely exquisite. How did you first discover this? When did you have that aha moment that what you were capturing, because it translates, as you say, to look exactly like a firework. It's actually mind blowing. When did you first discover this kind of effect? <laughs> Um, yeah, good grab, totally by chance. I mean, I, I, I tend to think of myself as a landscape photographer, and I've been spending my life running around taking pictures of, you know, the kind of landscape behind me. Um, but one evening, coming back through Kirstenbosch Gardens, um, quite late in the evening, I just took a cell phone snap of some of these pin cushions and arbitrarily looked, skimmed through my pictures the next day, and I thought, gosh, these two look like real genuine fireworks. And that, that was enough encouragement to get me to go back and really try and capture even more of these uh, beautiful floral pictures or, or the, the flora that we have. And to describe them in a different way, to see them in a different light, as it were. Uh, and it's been a wonderful journey. I've, I've really enjoyed this, uh, you know, capturing these pictures and looking for different detail inside of these flowers. So what it has done is it's made me change my focus completely from these sort of broad landscapes right down into the minutiae. And I've discovered a whole new universe of possibility. 
Uh, that's why I mentioned earlier, it's almost like quantum photography because you're kind of finding a layer or a dimension that most of us wouldn't see. What kind of equipment do you need for someone else wanting to embark on this kind of journey and focus on this kind of detail and bring it to life in this way, other than a, a, a handy torch, uh, which we discovered now as part of your, your tricks of the trade. What do they need to go and do this? What are you using? Great question, Graham, and, and I'm often asked that question, so I'm glad you asked. Uh, look, as I mentioned, some of these pictures are taken on a cell phone, so you really don't need fancy equipment. I mean, that's a really important point to make. Um, but I do use a, a, a digital SLR, a DSLR camera, and I, I use prime lenses. So these are either a 50 mil lens or a 24 mil lens. And again, they are the cheapest lenses that you can buy. I mean, they really are, you know, 1,500 Rand, 2,000 Rand, you can pick up a lens. That can, that can take these pictures. So you don't need the most expensive equipment. You just need to experiment. I shoot what I call low and slow. So low and slow is low ISO, and slow is slow shutter speed. So obviously I stabilize the camera as best I can, uh, and then I use supplemental light as, I, as I've described through a torch or a different light source. Even a cell phone torch would be, would be good enough to, to take these pictures. So you don't need to have fancy equipment. It's all about experimenting and having fun. Um, I love it, and obviously having that, that darkness behind you to be able to highlight that, that work. So with this now being a, obviously a major focus, what's next for you? What would you like to try and bring to life in a way that people haven't seen before? What has this inspired you to do for the next phase of your work? Oh, again, Graham, I don't know where my journey is going, but, but I am, I'm starting to sort of play around with black and white photography now. And, um, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm sort of leaning into, into portraiture, just this the journey is taking me into floral portraits. And so I'm, I'm sort of leaning off in a slightly different direction. But having said that, I've also fallen in love with spiders. So tiny little spiders. <laughs> and um, I, I recently took a picture of a, of a red spider on Table Mountain. It's an un, undescribed species, possibly an undescribed genus, which has really got the world by, by storm as well. But, and I didn't know anything about spiders. I just saw this beautiful creature, took a macro shot of it, and, you know, again, discovered that we have these undescribed species, uh, you know, sit on, on in, in, in the wilderness that we don't even know about. So that's another whole journey into macro photography. Uh, you are igniting my imagination, and I would imagine hosts of people are getting excited about turning that lens inward towards our planet. So thank you so much for doing that. You work, the work that you're doing, obviously in this creative space, but I think more importantly, the overarching work that you're doing to drive all of us to be more conscious about what we do. And it can be something as simple as just how we buy, what the choices we make as a consumer. There is something that we can all do, but it does take activists like yourself putting your hand up. So thank you so much for doing that in the most spectacular fashion. This has been awe-inspiring. Thank you so much. Thank you, Graham. Incredible to see these works of art, some cases shot even on a cell phone, not studio or digitally created. Absolutely beautiful. The most important take home, there is something that all of us can do, creatively or otherwise, to lead towards a more sustainable future when it comes to this beautiful natural resource.